Can you get any deep sky object with just a DSLR camera and a tripod without tracking? The answer is yes, and that's actually how we started um, in this hobby. So we're going to wait until my hair grows a bit, and then we'll go to the desert and try to take a picture of M42, and we'll see if we can see anything. Let's go. We're going to be straight and honest with you all. Do not expect to get impeccable results with just a tripod and a camera. You won't see something like this, but you will see something like this. Sure, it is not as impressive, but when you're just beginning in astrophotography, trust us, the feeling of knowing that you captured these few photons which traveled thousands or millions of light years to reach your camera? There is nothing quite like that accomplishment. At sunset, we made our way to a dry lake about 30 minutes from home, where the sky is pretty decent. And for a dry lake, it was actually very wet. It rained days ago, but there are still so many large puddles. The soil here is dry and retains no moisture, so the water has nowhere to go. It certainly looked like some wasteland apocalypse. We debated going back home and coming back on a different day to make this video, but eventually we managed to find an okay spot to park and set up. After all, all we needed was a tripod and a camera. So we're out here on a dry lake uh, near the highway and we're out and the skies are not so great, but it'll do. Yes, so all we need, uh, as we said, is a tripod, a new tripod, a camera right here, uh, DSLR, and the lens. So you can also get the moon. Uh, right now we have a full moon in the sky rising. You just have to aim it correctly and then you just use the zooming times 10 and then just focus as best as you can which can be kind of tricky and we can take a picture that's it all I used uh, for the settings was shutter speed is 1 um, 500 F11 and ISO 100. You can play around with those. Um, I like to take a few of them differently with different settings and different focusing and then just keep the best at home. The moon is cool and all, but that's not why we're here, right? You're here because you'd like to know if you can photograph deep sky objects with just a DSLR camera and a tripod. So let's ignore the moon for a second and wait for the sky to get a bit darker. Sometimes it can be fun being out in the middle of nowhere as a couple. We often find ways to have some fun while we wait for the dark. Take this night for example. Dahlia almost got thrown in a huge pond of water. And that's fun, right? Yeah. Sure. Okay, she almost broke my back, but hey, now it's almost dark enough. Right. Orion has become more visible now that it has passed beyond the moon. Wait, why did we pick a full moon night to image a nebula? Mmm, perhaps because the stars aligned for us? Orion is rising behind us, so we're gonna try to capture the nebula now. Alright, so right now we have Orion rising right there. Uh, so we're going to capture the, the nebula, uh, M42, with uh, the 300mm lens. Okay, so here I'm trying to zoom in on the nebula, on M42. Lucky for us, uh, M42 is really easy to find because it's right under Orion's um, belt. It's in Orion's sword. So I can actually see the stars from the sword in the live view right here. So I could easily zoom in and focus on the star. Peter, why am I talking in English? I was just about to ask you that, but I don't want to throw you off. Let's see if we can find a star. Oh, we can see a star right here. Very close to the nebula, so we don't lose it. When I know it's perfectly focused is when it's as small as I can see it. Uh, oh, it looks, looks pretty good for now. You know what, that might be the right nebula, we can see right away, I think. Not sure. Let's see. See, it's right there. Um, so it's a bit up left, but we are pretty focused right now. I'm going to turn off the lights of the car 
so we can take a good picture. Let's try again. Yep, there it is. It's pretty good. Um, let's see if there's any stout trails. Taking a 4 second photo at 300mm lens gave us quite a bit of star trails. But that's okay because it was just for test shots anyway. Okay, so I'm going to change the exposure time. If we do, well we can do 500 or 600. I'm going to use 600 uh, by 300 which is the camera lens and it's 2 seconds. So I'm going to do 2 seconds. Alright, so all you could do now is take a few of those, like maybe 40, 60, 80 uh, in a row, trying to make sure it's centered, and then you can stack everything in one and get a good picture of it. At this focal length, your maximum exposure time will be just 2 seconds. It should actually be even lower if you're using a crop sensor camera, so it helps if you have a good lens with a lower f number than ours. We decided not to image that night because the moon was literally right there. And we thought we'd show you a result from our actual image of M42 from three years ago. Back when we barely knew what we were doing. This is a result of less than one hour on the Orion Nebula with this setup. The Canon T3i and a 300mm lens at f5.6. It was quickly processed on Deep Sky Stacker. On that particular night, we did not have an intervolometer, so that means that we took all the shots manually, one by one. We were beginners, so our processing wasn't great and maybe we got a little too crazy with the saturation. But hey, we are proud of this image, and we'll always cherish it as our first good photo of a nebula. Although M42 is a good target for DSLR and tripod imaging, there are lots of other deep sky objects you can photograph if you're just beginning this hobby. It is a good idea to bring binoculars with you to scan the sky for large, bright targets. You can also use an app on your phone to find messy objects quickly depending on the season. We have a full list of the best targets on our website, which you can find in the description, and a full video coming up in the near future. Here is an example of the Pleiades cluster taken under one hour with this setup. And here is the famous Andromeda galaxy. A couple of planets also make good targets as well, mostly thanks to their moons, as you can see here with Jupiter. As a last note, remember that you do not need a telescope or a tracker to deep sky image, so it is possible to capture galaxies and nebulae. Some advice we have is to use a wider lens for better results, as you can see here for M31 with a 50mm lens. And here for Orion, where you can even see the Horsehead Nebula a bit. We hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, we just really wanted to show you guys that you can capture deep sky objects with just a setup alone. So M42 is a really good target. Uh, here is ours from about three years ago. As you can see, we took a bunch of them, we stacked them all together to get this result. That was the same camera, same tripod, that's it. So you can do a bunch of them. And um, Expect soon that we're going to release a video with the best targets to capture with this same setup. So we'll see you next time and clear skies.